With every big Tarkov patch comes a wipe. The time when every single player's account is reset back to square one. But this wipe in particular was a special one. Because the devs finally released Streets of Tarkov, a map that's been hyped for over four long years. So there was an influx of both new players and returning Tarkov players. Everyone was on it, except me. I came into the swipe 29 days late. Yo, Jams, thanks for the three months. Much love, thank you. And this, my friends, is an endgame bullet shot from the most powerful weapon in Tarkov straight to my chest for a one-shot kill. And it's only been 29 days since the wipe happened. Yeah, we're, we're definitely a month late to the wipe, guys. This can be discouraging. Even this guy thought so. So I took this as a challenge. I set a goal to reach level 15 in under 7 days despite being a month late to the wipe. Reaching 15 is a good goal since we unlocked the flea market at that level. And the flea market is a great way to level the playing field against higher level players. Players. What you're about to see is how a simple change of mindset can help us reach our goal. And it starts with the obvious. Being fully aware that we'll be running into players who are likely more geared than us. So every potential PMC I run into, I'm always gonna assume the worst. That they're geared to the tooth. Oh, this guy in front of me right there. I don't know if it's a uh, scav or PMC. We'll get a closer look. That's a scav. Okay, we'll slow down a bit here because that was a scav. Someone shot him. There's so much more Obviously, I have no suppressor. This guy hasn't died yet, so is that PMC shooting this guy or not? He's not shooting this guy. Oh no, he is dying. He's getting shot by the PMC in, in front. Uh oh, if he goes here, I'm gonna have to shoot this guy and I'm gonna reveal my position. Let's watch my back here. This guy is not dead yet. I'm hoping I don't have to shoot this guy. I'm not sure what I'm up against, so I'm gonna play slow and use this scav as bait. I'll wait for whoever was shooting to come up close. I could disengage and double back, but I'm in a good position for a surprise attack. guy backed off. After my initial burst of shots, I see a PMC retreat into the tree line. So I'm assuming I didn't kill the guy, but at least we got him to run off. This gives me time to disengage and reroute to go and focus on my quest, grabbing Jaeger's letter. Try to cut through here and get in the forest. Try to grab the letter and go. I'm not really interested in PvP right now. Oh, I'll take some loot though. Level 4 armor, so we take those. Pick whatever. Beggars can't be choosers. As planned, we get into the forest for cover and go straight for a quest. We may have lost an opportunity for a PMC kill, but that's okay. My priority right now is to focus on questing and only pick fights that are worth fighting. I'm not gonna be fighting every PMC I see. Especially as a low level. Wait a minute, I killed him! Remember this guy? Actually killed him. He seemed to have bled out two minutes after this engagement. This was a great raid to get the ball rolling. I then ran a scav in streets to get a little acquainted with the map while I looked for in-raid Saliwas for therapist. And lo and behold... Oh, there you go. I'll take one. <laughs> this find was huge. I didn't bother exploring any longer and went straight for extract. Next up, I went into customs for my next PMC raid to look for more potential in-raid Saliwas. This was admittedly a risky choice. I could have gone into woods, a map with a little more surface area to avoid fights. But because customs is a map known for instant action, that's what my gut needed in this exact moment. I needed to throw myself into the pool of sharks to get myself primed for the wipe. So I just listened to my gut. There's one specific med spawn I wanted to check this building right here. But I spawned here. I'm at the opposite end of the map. So instead, I planned on just working my way to extract and just look for a Sliwa on this side of the map before leaving. But Tarkov had other plans for me. The building I wanted to head to was the power switch for ZB-13. There's a, the, the underground area, the basement area. There's like a couple med spawns there. I have um, bias over that.
I'll be honest, I don't really want to loot him. It's so out in the open, we made way too much noise. But at the same time, kind of tempting. Scav. I thought it was a PMC. I was trying to bait. I took what I could and conveniently found boat extract open. I ran back customs to head to the same building from earlier to hunt for a couple of Saliwas. With this main bridge spawn, I passed through construction to get across. So we got boys. We have someone fighting scavs there. Let's get to the right corner here. A little safer. Oh, there he is. I see him. He was running left to right. I, th I think that was him. I don't think that's a scav. Could be wrong. Let's wait a little bit more here. But that was a player. Yeah, that AK shooting is a player. I don't think that's a scav. I'm in no rush, so I discreetly scanned the area. If I get a jump on this guy, it would be a great opportunity to upgrade my gear. Oh, there, there. Right to left, chat. Right to left. One more. Suppressed AK guy. Suppressed AK guy somewhere here. I gotta, I gotta run. See you later. That guy had a second gun, holy shoot. We're gonna not try to fight that suppressed guy. That was a close call. Tarkov threw a curveball of a surprise PMC behind us and we barely got out of that alive. I'm happy I won it though. I took what I could and immediately disengaged to safety. The plan now is to walk the edge of the map into old gas, but in classic Tarkov fashion, there was more trouble. That sounds like in the place I want to be at. That uh, sounds like it's in power. The building I've been meaning to hit up has someone in it. The good news, I see that the old gas extract is open. I could go for a quick reset. Okay, I heard movement. I just wanted to confirm it's a scav. It's a scav doing pivots. Or a player baiting me. Ideally, I don't want to shoot the scav yet. I think I will have to anyway. Uh, cause we heard shots in the power switch building, so I'll just try to loot and go. I'm looking for Saliwa. I didn't find any Saliwa in the nearby lootables, but I did grab good hideout items. I then looted the scav I killed and found a 206 key. Huge early find. Ooh, 206, that's a good find right there. After hearing those shots, my brain immediately tells me, just take what you can and get out. 
Something worth mentioning as well in this moment was that a handful of viewers were actually surprised that I didn't Tetris my way into taking the Scavs level 4 armor. And the reason my mindset into this race to the flea market is just to keep doing what matters and move on. That little time to spend to Tetris my way into min-maxing my loot could be the difference between surviving and getting head tapped while looting. And it's something you'll notice throughout this playthrough. I do what matters the most in the moment and keep moving forward. I quickly checked the Scav if he had any good keys or quest items on him and got my butt out of there. GG. Good raid. Good raid. We're back in customs, still mainly going for a Saliwa. I spawned by ZB11, which is great. I'm super near that one little building I've been wanting to get into all day. I spent the first minutes of the raid looting nearby lootables. This is something I do when I get a spawn at the edge of the map. It allows me to kill time while looting to guarantee that we're likely behind most players as we progress through the map later. While doing this, I kill the last scab needed for the starter quest debut. Then move on to jump over the fence to head to the much-awaited Siliwa spawn I've been after. But then, there's a guy to my left right there. I, don't, I think he thinks I don't know that he saw me. So we'll just reposition. He's going to wait behind that hill. I feel like he might. Let's do a big flank around. Scab to my left. So this, this is going to be a problem. I'm going to have to make noise to clear him if I, if I wanted to. Fudge. The scab's there. I don't want to shoot as much as possible, but I have to. The player's here. Could be a scav. I think it's a player. I don't kill him. That was the guy. That was the guy. From earlier. Let's just get Let's get okay, He uh he made it to the gate. As long as we pushed him away. As I mentioned, I'm happy we pushed him away. Getting a kill isn't always what I need in Tarkov. Being able to disengage from this fight is huge for me. This gives us breathing room to do what we're here for. That's the Liwa hunt. And on the sixth raid of the day, I finally get to enter the building I've been aiming for. Mind you, this isn't the only place to get Saliwas, but it's my favorite one. So I finally head into the basement where the med spawns are. And to no one's surprise, no Saliwa. But I did get this. Uh, a machinery good fine uh, i don't have to go to dorms anymore for that and i found an in raid taz first gear too so despite not finding a saliwa at least we've got a bag full of goodies oh you know what i always knew this place wouldn't fail me i made it out safely via ruaf and returned to customs to do the pocket watch quest since we just copped ourselves a machinery key As I try to make it out of construction safely, Sniper Scav didn't want to get off my butt. I didn't want to stop to try and take him down because I wanted to keep moving. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Uh oh, 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 I'm okay. So grabbing the pocket watch is one thing, surviving is another. I took a breather hoping he stops targeting me. Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> he's still after me. This is insane. He wants me so bad. Don't you have any other target, Sniper Scav? Come on, man. Shoot someone else, please. Jeez. I feel a little safer now that I've made it into this ditch. I just gotta work my way slowly and carefully to extract. ADS. I should have just trusted my point fire there. GG! Uh, good fight, good fight. I still stand by what I just said here. I should have trusted my point fire. Good fight though. Dying with a pocket watch was a bit deflating. So I took a breather and did a quick scav run to rub off all that salt. In this, I found a shiny new weapon repair kit and an armor repair kit out here in the garages by Big Red. I went for a quick extract to take these home and hopped back into my PMC, headed straight for woods to the search mission quest, survived, and went back at the customs to give the pocket watch quest another to try but first i do need the machinery key again the player or not what? okay it was a scab dude that the way he It was a player. Lol. At least one of them was. Dude, someone got this already? Please, please. Ah, oh, dude. How hard is this? I'm never gonna get pocket watch done anymore it's over we're definitely not getting it with that attitude i decided to just go straight for an extract and reset back at the customs but as i'm walking in the dark by the bus station i hear something is that a pmc or a scat i can't tell Laser, that was a laser. You might have night vision. Yep, yep, it's a player. Let's just go. I'm gonna check for a silly wood kit. Bye! As his teammate starts chucking grenades, I just disregard and move on. I check nearby stashes from my last in-raid Saliwa, but to no avail. And again, I hear something lurking in the dark. <laughs> That's a good question, what Brian said. Brian Lawrence in chat asks, how can you differentiate between your footsteps and other PMCs? Let me know when you find out what, what the answer is. It's not good. What I was about to say is I don't know the answer to that. I'm still trying to figure it out, I'll be honest. After a bit of a search in the dark, I end up not finding this guy anymore. So I moved on for a reset. I get one of the best spawns for dorms, run straight for the key, and get the pocket watch uncontested. I made it out safely to wrap up our first day of the wipe. We jumped to level 6 today, 9 levels away from the flea market. Because I'm not looting so much with my PMC runs as I'm hyper focusing on quests, I try to grab as much valuables as a scav to make some cash. This is my favorite way to start a day. It's a great warm up and a free run with nothing to lose. <gasps> Last Saliwa secured. This is huge. I go home, turn this in, and unlock a couple more quests. 
So gas N and 206. Okay, we have we have the 206 key. But before I head into customs to do acquires part one, I'm gonna need to acquire the director's office key. Getting this key will allow me to do multiple tasks in customs in one go. These food items for the barter are all obtainable in interchange. So to the mall we go. I grabbed the required items, but sadly couldn't find any crackers. A bag was full anyway, so I went for extract. Is audio any better? Um, it's my first raid. Haven't really noticed anything crazy yet, but. He opened the, the case. The player scab, I think. Actually, looks like a PMC. Yep, it's a PMC. Oh, that's loud. I took what I could and extracted. I also remembered that I can buy crackers from Therapist. But the bad news... Ah, oh, I can only buy three. <laughs> so to kill time while we wait for the trader reset, I went into woods to kill scavs for another quest, Shootout Picnic. This was a super quick one since the trader reset was at about 15 minutes. So I killed three scavs and immediately extracted. I bought the last cracker, bartered for the key, and finally hit up customs. In this raid, I decided to skip on Aquarius part one since there was a lot of gunshots going down in the dorms area. It felt a little too risky to do it. So instead, I went straight to the director's office in big red for delivery from the past. Oh my god, I can't prom. <laughs> He's, he's, um, he's here, he's here. I was delaying the heal, I don't want to make a heal sound just yet. To keep this guy off of me, I went for a big reposition and tried to get a flank on him. I went through storage and went to the other side of Big Red. So I felt like he was somewhere here. Anyway, let's move. I'm hoping he just gave up. It got real quiet, so I'm hoping he just left and I could safely get my document. But then... Oh, movement. He's upstairs. This is the player, I think. Metal. It's two or one. That's him. It has to be him. I'm in a bad spot. There's bushes here. If I move here, I get slowed and noise. His audio disappeared. I'm going to move through these bushes. Oh, well. It was definitely two. One to my left, one to my right. GG. That was a suppressed AK that shot me earlier. I committed to a full send after being forced to kill that scav and make some noise, and I paid for it. In hindsight, a little more patience would have helped me out there. Nonetheless, GG. I come back for another run at Delivery from the Past, but this time I get the trailer park spawn. This is good for me. Like earlier in this video, I talked about when I spawn at the edge of the map, I like playing slow to guarantee that I'm likely behind most players. So again, I did exactly that. I chilled around the storage area and looted what I could to kill time. Then I heard this. Oh, that's a UMP just 12 o'clock. Yeah, that's just by the wall. Movement right here. He's going right to left right now.
Cause you won't pee on that wall. Dude here walking right to left. He's still going. What DPI am I on? 800. Um, and then ADS is 0.3. Sorry. Um, mouse sense is 0.3. ADS is 0.23. DPI 800. It bothers me. It bothers me that the interface sounds are super loud. Um, it's a bug. It's a bug. I can't turn it off. Can't make it lower. It's an audio bug. Oh, are UMP guys still around here? The scab sounds like he's shooting right to left there. It's gonna be super loud, chat. Oh wait. How come that's not loud? What is loud? I guess looting, not examining. Yeah, the interface is, is bugged right now. Um, silly war I fact pretty much, uh Shepherd. Let's go, what's up? This guy has a Taz. I could probably push this guy. Where's the UMP guy though? Yeah, that was him. Just a quick third party. <laughs> Wait, we have to check if his UMP man though. Yeah, it's UMP, man. He has a UMP on him. He ran out of bullets. That's why he was on the Taz. I purposely left this fight uncut and raw because this was a perfect buildup of how I approach most PvP as a lower geared PMC. It's a lot of gathering info, patience, and deciding whether it's worth a fight or not. This fight in particular felt like a gimme, mostly because we were just gathering info as I moved forward and we knew it was going to be an easy one. I entered Big Red with no contest, got into the office, and grabbed my quest. I decided to beeline straight for extract, even ignoring any ounce of loot on the way, which surprised some of my livestream viewers. Attempting to loot, but I just don't, like, with the living from the past and, and up my PMC's butt, um, I just wanna keep moving. I made it safely to extract, but only half the job's done. Now, it's the hard part. We gotta take this document into factory and plant it right by gate 3. Oh no. We saw a guy. I gotta clear this guy. Time to pack mags, my friend. We saw a guy spawn here. I don't know where he is. Okay, lots of shots on the other side. Kind of a good sign for us. YOLO. Ten seconds. Let's go. Mission complete. I went back to my kill to loot him up real quick, then made it out to extract. Alright, GG. Woo. 
<laughs> good raid, dude. Good raid. I turned in the quest, then moved on to mark the orange tankers and customs. Also, I wanted to do Aquarius Part 1 as well. Something worth talking about right now while I run these quests is a common question I get as a lower level player in a wipe, which is, how do I even get decent gear to run? And the answer can be seen in this raid. While running from point A to point B to do my quests, I kill scavs along the way, loot them, and I loot containers as well, or whatever I can, as long as it's clear of PMCs. Raid after raid of doing this, you'll eventually build up your stash. I finished up this raid by wrapping up Aquarius Part 1, marked all four tankers, and came out alive with no PvP. Turned in both quests and hopped back in for Aquarius Part 2, 15 scav kills and customs. I blasted through these scav kills and even got a nice SV98 along the way. The problem, I literally need one more kill but we've cleared all the scavs in the area. I could just extract right here and run it back which is the smart thing to do because I'm also low on ammo. I'm on my last couple of MP5 mags. Less than half, that's not good. But I felt a little adventurous. So I risked it all and went to old gas to get my last scav kill. All right, let's get out of here, boys. But there's always a price to pay with greed. Oh, oh shit. There's a guy, there's a player right there. Oh no, this guy's holding me down. He's gonna hold my, my, and I'm screwed. I don't have, uh, we're gonna have to use this SP I did. He was, I think he was trying to aim down on me. Problem is he's gonna expect, he's gonna hold me by that suicide gate, right? I have six minutes left on the clock, so I don't really have much time for PVP. And not to mention, I'm low on ammo. Behind cover, no way. Ugh. Half, half a mag. Ugh. And a dream. I'm one more Mosin shot away from dying, by the way. No! Oh. <laughs> I miraculously survived these two fights and hobbled my way to extract. GG, boys. GG. What a raid. What a raid. <laughs> We're now level 9, 6 levels away from the flea market. I started the third day with a quick scav run and interchange and found a couple of dead PMCs. I checked them and found a couple of nice guns. I got out and decided to sell the VSS but keep the MPX. I got onto my first PMC raid of the day in woods, still rocking the MP5 from yesterday. I intend to kill 12 more scavs to finish shootout picnic and look for an in raid 3M body armor to finish up my skier quest. And things got a little spicy early. Guy right to left. I don't have to fight this guy, but he's naked. He's naked. He has no armor, and I have flesh hitting around. So that was a. If he was a little heavily armored, I maybe I still would have picked the fight, but I would have probably been a little more careful. Maybe try to get a prone angle and mag dump his legs. But when we saw that he was naked, just full sent the shot. So we have nine mm's. I moved on to the vehicle exit village to look for my first scav kills of the raid, but then I hear a footstep in one of the houses and I'm convinced this is a PMC. One little footstep.
He's a, sounds like more of a player than it is a scav. What level am I? Nine. Yeah, it's a player. He's opening. Let's see how good Sneak is right now. He heard me. <laughs> the, the wood footsteps are really loud, but uh, GG. Do you have a teammate? I don't think he has a teammate. Would have been dead by now if you'd have one. I'll be honest, dude. I thought he didn't hear me. I was like, I think we're okay. I think we can full send this. No, no, no. He heard us. He had a nice level 4 armored rig I switched into and a decent amount of goodies in his bag. As I finished up looting this guy, my live stream chat was telling me I missed a 3M armor. Did you guys say 3M? Where's the 3M here? Oh my god! How did, how'd you guys see that? Jeez, you guys got insane eyes. Nice. Okay, let's leave. Oh, um, we didn't get we didn't get a scav kill, but I want that 3M home. Oh, someone's taking VX. Well, we're not gonna bother. Wait a minute. I have a sniper. I just realized. I got greedy here for a moment, but I knew there was no point to this fight. So I fought my urge and disengaged. Let's not get greedy. Let's go home. Super tempting to just hold that angle and try to get a snipe, but not worth getting greedy over that. I have a 3M. I stuck to my word, even ignored potential fights along the way, and got out safe. I finally turned in the 3M armor and got right back into woods to kill scavs. But just a few minutes after spawning in, the Tarkov committee calls it point fire. It's because he's technically not shooting from the hip. He's, he actually has to get his gun shouldered. Can't tell if that was a player or not. But we're gonna back up and heal. Uh, I'm gonna do a full flank. This could be just AI. I may be overplaying this, but hit me right in the chest. It kind of hurts. So I'm gonna try to do a long flank if he doesn't spot me. And so I did. I made it back, but never saw this guy again. I'm pretty convinced this was a player though. I couldn't find any scavs to kill along the way, so I decided to just go straight for spine where there's usually a ton of scavs. But then I see something else. There's a guy in front. I have to get closer. I don't know if he hears me. He might hear me. If he hears me, he's gonna turn on us. YOLO. That's an SVD. Oh, whoa. A mouse jump. That's a player with an SVD. He might be the Sturman killer. That M4, by the way, that might have been the M4 who shot me at the start of the raid. Loud M4. I didn't bother looting the kills since he was covered by that loud SVD. It wasn't worth fighting, so I flanked around to safety and went on to kill a couple of scavs before safely extracting. I quickly ran back woods, still hunting for scavs, spawned behind the USAC camp, and went straight for the scav bunker and container camp area. Unfortunately, no scavs, but then, if no one's here. What the f A player is a little too far down there. Where is he? Sniper scav wall. Look oh, there, 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 there. Oh, this guy. There's another guy. There's another one. There's another one. Uh... I heard one to my left, I swear. Did I hear myself? Was that audio being weird? And yes, it was audio being weird. After psyching myself out, I looted my kill and moved on to the VX village again to find more scavs. Along the way, I killed a naked PMC wandering around the woods with a suppressed VPO215, then went on to the village, killed a couple of scavs, and decided to break my own rule. When I'm using a loud gun, I usually reposition right away after a burst of shots. I don't bother looting with the fear of getting third party. But this time around, we were clear anyway, so I looted to try to make a few extra rubles. I'm gonna go loot this because why not? I took my sweet time and looted what I could in this house until 
Shoot, PMC, PMC. There's a PMC. I think there's a scab, but there's a PMC. Might be a dual PMC, actually. I'm not in a good place. I'm cornered. Yep, he dropped his bag. We just got that guy. There's one more. There's one more. I think there's one more. Yep, one more. Good fight, GG. This was a bittersweet death. Bitter because, well, I died, but sweet because it validated my own rule to keep moving and focus on the task at hand. This made me realize as well that a big part of my success as a Tarkov player is my ability to avoid greed at times and focus on the more important tasks in the moment. In times I let it slip, I pay for it. And this proved me right. I need nine more scav kills for shootout picnic, so I'm back in woods to hopefully finish this off. I'm bringing in the MPX I found in the scav run and interchange earlier today, and I'm surprised of how well it performs. I haven't used an MPX in a while, and with the recent recoil buffs Tarkov patched a couple of days prior to this, it feels amazing. Wow, this MPX feels so good. I then decided to make my way to the scav bunker area for more kills, but on the way there, if I could have a... Maybe we'll check Sunken Village. Oh, there's a guy in front right there. 12 o'clock. I don't want to shoot yet because I don't think he sees me. I don't need to shoot just yet. Let's see if he goes towards us. I have to pack my mags too. Waiting for him to approach worked out, so I go loot him. He's got an MP5. Oh, he's level 3. Then continue my scav hunt. I get a total of 5 scav kills between the container camp and the scav bunker, and then move towards outskirts to head for the scav house spawn before extracting. But then, I got company. Oh. I think that's a player scav. I'm out of ammo. Either I'm, No, I'm not... I'm not out of ammo. I think the game bug? I got his legs. I think he's limping. Oh man, he almost got me. I play that... Oh man, I wish... I, I could have played that way better. I, I was panicky. I was panicky with my ammo situation. My gun stopped shooting. I'm not sure if I ran out of ammo or what. But uh... I barely survived that fight. GG though. Oh boy, this guy looted up like crazy. I'm, I'm gonna go. We could loot more, but let's just take the bag. It's full. I leave. Remember my cardinal rule? Keep moving and focus on the task at hand. The last time I didn't follow this, I got demolished. I'm banged up for the fight and I'm extremely low on ammo, so I decided to just finish off the scav kills next raid. But then, before I could even make it to extract... I think you've got you, but I... Oh shoot. running out of bullets let's just leave and finally just as i'm about to step foot on extract so much going on my mind there <laughs> oh wait shoot out picnic ready to keep wait what oh he bled out <laughs> i needed one more kill and I, I i shot the scab in the legs i had no idea i needed one more kill <laughs> gg totally planned can't make that up boys with shootout picnic done i can finally move on from woods i head into reserve to do bunker part one where all i gotta do is head down into the control room and get out but after hitting up the room i run into this they're on the same floor or not are they on the same floor or not It's a three man. Bye. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, you guys fight. Uh, I'll, I'll do my own thing here. This is something I preach a lot for people who have trouble surviving in Tarkov, especially when you're lower geared, to pick your fights. And this was a moment of picking my fight. If you look back at our PvP throughout this video so far, it's been in situations where I'm confident I have a chance of coming out alive. In this one, against three juicy PMCs out in an open area, surviving was unlikely. There are times though where I'm willing to risk it for the biscuit, but here, surviving to finish the quest was more important for me. I successfully disengaged and safely extracted. Next up was to attempt Bunker Part 2, but this raid got cut short because I found an in-raid Iskra lunchbox for Jaeger's quest. I'm back in reserve for a real attempt at Bunker Part 2 this time. I did the first three entrances for the quest, and then I hear this. The tough part about this quest is we have to do it all in one raid. We can't do these couple ones and then leave. Is that what I mean? So if I, if I like leave with this, I'll have to do it again if I come back. We got them both. I think we finished friends from the west. Friend from the west. Just need a dog tag now. Going back to our conversation about picking your fights, this was one of those instances. Two PMCs fighting, they're oblivious of my position. It was an easy fight to pick. I did the last two entrances, then made my way out via the D2 extract. Check your corners, chat. Always check your corners. Always check your corners. I couldn't believe I actually checked my corner and there's someone there. I you can't I, I can't believe I actually killed someone there. I can't believe it. that door i thought i had him i thought i had him dude gg though gg good fight good fight to both of you i thought i had him dude i thought i had him wait wait oh my god we killed it, it was a three man it was a three man indeed there were two in the next door over i killed one halfway down the metal stairs with this mag dump nonetheless that was intense gg we're beginning day four attempting fishing gear for peacekeeper where I have to plant an SV-98 and a multi-tool out in the open by the beach and shoreline. Ideally, I need to do this in one try, because if I don't, I cannot buy another SV-98 to plant, because remember, I only have level 1 traders. So I play it slow and try to make sure I don't run into any unwanted fights. Ugh. It's behind me. Uh, loud M700, I think, is that is what it is. I think it's too predictable if I go straight here. Someone, I'm gonna reverse. I'm gonna reverse here. I think if I just run towards gas more, he's just gonna get a sniper angle on me. I won't heal my arm yet. I'm gonna try to reverse flank here. I just fear that if I keep running towards gas, he's just gonna, again, get an angle on me and I'm screwed. It sounded like a loud M700. That was a good shot too. He hit me right in the arm. There, he's throwing grenades at where he thinks I am, so that's a good sign. We could try to get an angle on him, but I have to be close enough, you know? I have a CMS kit, but I don't want to heal my arm. I think I'm going to flank more. I'm going to flank more. Oh, shit. It's one more. Ugh. 
Can I get them both? I see one body. I got, we got them both. Oh, we got our sniper. This was a huge confidence boost for me. Being able to win that 1v2 that I wasn't meant to win in the first place feels really good. It kind of oh, no, 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 oh, sh Are you kidding me? Oh, no way. My thorax is so broken. I think we just go. Um, we could loot a little more, but the amount of noise that was made here, sca two scabs there. I don't want to stay too long there. Remember our cardinal rule? Pick our fights and focus on the task at hand. So I disengaged and tried to carefully make my way to the fishing boat to plant our items. Again, big chance someone's at the pier. We heard that hunter pop off earlier. But uh, it's it's hard to just wait, right? Like, what? how do I know how, how long to wait? So I'm just going to go for it, and then we'll adjust accordingly. There's scav right there. I'm going to try to avoid that scav. He, doesn't, he hasn't aggroed on me yet. I'm screwed if he aggroes on me, GG. Okay, we're okay. My only worry now is a player right here. Exiting via Pierre. And then also worried about a scav peeking out from the stairs. That me not killing that scab could also F me over. Maybe that scab goes down these stairs and I'm dead. F it, we just go for it. Alright, we got a minute. Just to remind you guys, I only have one shot at this. And then this happened. Okay, I'll be honest, nothing actually happened. I did it successfully and safely. So I completed the task and got out safe. With that done, I ran over to customs to mark three of the Tiger Safari UN trucks. After marking two of three, I double backed into the unknown key cabin to do that quest real quick, then quickly ran to safety into the water warehouse. With this quest item on me, the stakes for surviving just got much higher. So I decided to skip on the third UN truck and just go straight for RUAF extract. But then, Oh, that guy survived. Oh. He survived. He definitely uh. survived. We saw him. We got into the warehouse. That's it. Again, going back to our cardinal rule, pick our fights and focus on the task at hand. I disengaged and made it safely to extract. Oh. <laughs> I made it back into customs to mark the last UN truck. Oh. But that didn't work out. I went back in, and for the next few raids, it was all about tasking. I avoided most unnecessary engagements and blasted through a bunch of quests. Marked three tanks in Shoreline, got the SAS discs from the drones, and then ended the day by running reserve to finish Bunker Part 2 and wiping the raiders in the process. It was a hugely productive day in levels, putting us straight to level 14 as we begin day number 5.
Day 5 should be pretty simple. I started with a scav run and immediately got an in-raid Isker lunchbox to finish off the Jaeger quest, putting us 10,000 XP away from level 15. From here, all I need to do is one last quest, stir up, where I'll have to kill 3 PMCs with a pistol. This will put us to level 15. How did I miss that? Oh lord. Yeah, let's kill one. I, I was like, okay, I could just push him and mag dump him. He's naked, but I whiffed every shot. I went all around factory looking for a second target. Until... Someone's upstairs. We're gonna go for him. He's up here. Hello. I got absolutely demolished. GG. I ran it back immediately, still with a Glock. It's a shotgun guy. Why are we getting so much packet loss? You have flea yet? Nope. He's still up there. He didn't chase. It's gonna be tough fighting this shotgun dude here. We're, we have the same idea. Leg each other. Or whatever he has. There's a flechette. Dude, that, the packet loss is crazy right now. 25% packet loss. You know, let's go up through here. Yo, Dane! What's up, Dane? Uh, Wilma. I'll, uh, thank you, I guess. Uh, Filipino. What if we fight at range? Oh, what the hell? Ah! Well played by this guy. He outplayed me throughout this whole fight. GG. Here we are in our third factory raid, still trying to get a second target. From the get-go, I hear a shotgun popping off by the death corner spawn. So, we go for it. I'm going against a lot of shotguns. This is really rough.
size flashlight. He's waiting for me to push him. Oh. Jeez, that took a while. Ooh, what a fight. What a fight. Super close fight here, but a big win for us. I take home the shotgun and my viewers gave me an idea. Why don't I use the shotgun to soften up my next target, then finish him off with the pistol. So I ran it back with that exact strat. Okay. Oh my god, okay. goodness for the shotgun. Chat always comes in clutch. Thanks guys. I went for extract but unfortunately got head tapped while opening gate 3. It's all good though, we still come out as winners. After turning in stirrup, we're literally 78 XP away from level 15. It's <laughs> 78. So to celebrate and officially get to 15, I gave my live stream a 1911 pistol run. This is something they've been begging for since we started the stirrup runs. So I gave it to them. And this is what officially got us to level 15 to complete the challenge. If you guys enjoyed this run, check out my race to level 42 before the biggest Tarkov wipe ever happened. I'm married in this the anthem. If you reckon with it, put your hands up.